Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast. I'm Chris, joined by my brothers, Adam. Hello. And Eric. Hello. We are back in the room to talk once more about video games. And in this Valentine's special, we're going to do something a little bit different. We'll talk about something that's probably not talked about uh, in relation to games all that much. At least not as like a full topic. Like People probably bring up relationships and things in, in games. But love as a topic in gaming. You know, like people always talk about like violence in games. Like Do games cause violence? And do games talk about violence? <laughs> do and games hatred? cause love? The games cause love. Can can love bloom on a battlefield? <laughs> As Otacon once so lovingly put it. Uh, so that's what we're going to look at today for the Valentine's special. Uh, just for something a little bit different. We're going to get a lovey dovey. Well, we're not going. That's fucked up. <laughs> so we're going to talk about our favorite uh, love stories, our favorite relationships in gaming which games we felt did it really well. Maybe some stories resonated with us in that way. Uh, or maybe they didn't, and we might disagree on whether they did or not. We might um, have a few thoughts about how games could explore that better in games, or maybe they just shouldn't do it at all. <laughs> see? We'll see. I don't know what the guys are going to say. I don't even know what I'm going to say. We're just going to see where this whole conversation goes. But if you are watching us on YouTube, you can, of course, jump into the conversation in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this conversation at any point, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe to show us a bit of support, and click that notification bell so that you know when we put out episodes or bonuses in the future. And if you're listening to us on audio platforms, you can, of course, still get in touch on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take to let us know what your favorite video game love stories are. Um, I think some people get into, like, there's some game genres that I think touch on love as a theme more than others. And maybe we'll get into that. But without further ado, let's talk love. <laughs> yeah why is it all gonna be so sexy <laughs> um what's the first game even that would come to your mind that's oh, I, I, yeah that. the, when when chris brought up the the topic the oh wait do you mean the song or the, <laughs> what's, what's, what's the first no. game you think of and i go wow <laughs> Uh, well, actually, the topic. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, I, and, uh, I know, a relationship didn't come to mind the, the mini setup. So it, one did. Yeah, straight away. Eric, fucking hell, let's jump straight oh. over to you, man. So, which, which, yeah, which, which game straight away came to mind? Which relationship came to mind? Nathan and Elena from Uncharted. I mean, the entire four games is about their relationship building. It is a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, because the start of the first one, it kind of feels very James Bond-esque. So you're a bit like, ah, you know, Elena is just essentially the love interest of it. While being like, the great character that she is. But then the second one, she's back in it. And you're like, mm. oh, okay, so this is going to become a little bit serious. And then you have that, like, that last scene just before the credits. When, like, she was asking him how afraid he was when she's oh, yeah. in. He's oh, like, yeah, yeah. on a scale of one to ten, he's like, a six? What? A six? I'm totally like a seven or an eight. So what are you talking about? The Guardians were like an eight. Those things are terrifying. <laughs> what's a <what's laughs> ten? Clowns. And it's just the dynamic between the them. The chemistry just, yeah. there was fantastic. Yeah, it was What's great start. about that is, well, it's firstly, that so was good. not scripted at all. That was just them um, yeah. it feels, it la feels natural. laughing, uh, yeah. just just having a joke. Um. And and Nolan North is genuinely afraid of clowns. That's the one thing he's terrified of. Oh right, I didn't know so that. So that, that's what's really great about that. It's just <laughs> that's just them riffing. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell it goes along. He's putting more and more of himself into the character of Nate. I, be, I believe he's said that yeah. in interviews as well. But he does, you know, they take his likeness on a little bit as well by the fourth one, much oh, more so it. when they yeah. can with the kind of little nuances. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, that is like a relationship that grows over the course of the game. I remember the third one bothered me a little bit 
in it. I was like, oh, they broke it up again. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I still had that. So but I still, I still like the sequence when he, it's like after the boat crashes or after the plane crashes. Yes. He says, yeah. he, no, it is after the boat sinks and then he ends up on the beach and then he goes back to Elena's place and he just lies and he looks at the ring and he just says that he's sorry and everything. Like I really liked that. Yeah, I think that's done like, really, really well. Potent and powerful. And then when yeah. you get to the fourth one, and obviously the fourth married. one is definitely oh, it's that's cherry that's, on that cake, like it's like. So I kind of look at it like there's like there's two different types of like love stories you can do. There's sort of the the fairy tale esque love story, which is like I don't know, destined soulmates kind of overly romantic kind of stuff that almost like Titus and you you do see, right? And then you get a more grounded kind of realistic take. Not that fucking anyone goes off killing monsters and hunting treasure and shit. But like that scene of Nate and Elena in Uncharted 4 is literally like, it's like, I've had that. <laughs> it's like, I, I know what that's like. Just sitting there and playing a game and chilling out in the sitting room and being told a story about how work went and just... Not listening. <laughs> not listening at all because you're thinking about some far right, off distant there. adventure. That's love. That's love. You know? Because, like, I like to look at, no, but, like, Uncharted 4 is, like, obviously the events in the game are literal, but you could look at it as metaphorical, which is that, like, he just wants to go off on some adventure, you know, like, it doesn't really matter what the adventure is, really, and she's just trying to ground him, and, like, I love that bit when he's, like, talking about how it was, like, like, they're together again, but she's sort of, she's really mad at him, mm -hmm. she's there to help him anyway, and, like, he has, like, a monologue to himself where he's, like, why don't you go pissing off a girl like that, like, but, like, like, Nathan, you're an idiot. Like, what are you going to do? You're never going to get someone who supports you as much as that person right there. Like, yeah, yeah. it's done really well. It's yeah, no, strongest so. in the fourth one. Strongest in the fourth one, but it's just, you don't get that strength without the other three. So that's why I feel like the whole series is, is very important. That relationship is quite important to, to growing up the characters. Because I feel as well that when players first played Uncharted, they would have been quite young and quite like yes looking for adventure much like drake so i feel like when they get to four they're that bit older and they're that bit more mature but still a little afraid of the commitment but they, they kind of deep down do want this so i feel like they grew up with the character drake as well which is why it's kind of <laughs> yeah more or less and that's, that's a little remember. bit of it reminds me uh like you're right in saying that it's so reliant on the the first three games and the relationship that was already established it's a bit like uh what Daniel Craig was like with M in Skyfall, yeah. wouldn't that relationship between him and this new mother that he has, basically, um, wouldn't be as powerful if it wasn't for all the groundwork that Pierce Brosnan established? It's true. Yeah, yeah it's true. Because it, it, Which is weird, because it's a totally different continuity in one way, but at yeah, the same yeah. time, it just it kind of helps you. You, you could kind of decide, oh, maybe after... Skyfall, no, sorry, after Quantum of Solace, maybe all the Pierce Brosnan adventures happen or something. It's weird. The timing of it is weird because in the it's timing of it is weird, but the the relationship is established. Like you get it, it you understand. You understand. That there was yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's definitely it's hard to watch those movies in any kind of chronological <laughs> sense because yeah, it's like it's, because it's in in Goldeneye, the idea is that M is the new she's the new M. Because yes. it was Judy Dench's first time. It was the yes. first time it was a woman, and it was this whole idea and of it, that. Even even that alone, yeah, um, it only works knowing uh, how Bond his relationship women. with M before as well. Not though. just with M, but with, with women throughout yeah. the entire series. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the strength of that. So yeah, part of part of like Elena's relationship with Drake is the is past knowledge. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's what builds the strength on that. Definitely. I don't know, like there was actually there was an interview I thought was interesting before where Nolan at first um didn't really agree with the idea. Like I love how four starts and I actually do think it, it was the right way to go. Mm -hmm. But he didn't really like the idea of them ha having settled down for a normal life before the adventure starts. Um and it, his biggest reason was always that Elena also loves adventure and loves all that shit. Which I think is most apparent in the first game. But I think the point of it is that in the first game, you have two kind of young, high-spirited people yeah. who are out looking for adventure while they're young. The thing is that Elena grows up 
and takes on responsibility and learns to settle down. And Nathan does not <laughs> go. Well, I think we learned that He's it's, uh, although the two of them, it's something that they really, really loved. You know, like, you, as much as he wanted to do that, at some point, there is a life to get on with. Yeah. You got to let go. But um, Drake's kind of love for it isn't out of like, oh, but I used to do it or whatever, but it's more to do with, we, we learned that it's actually a almost a childhood promise that he's yeah. going to continue to do it. Uh, and I think that eats away at him a little bit. Yeah. Man, wow, so they're such good. Let's go play Uncharted again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That they're is great. so good. They're great. We're going to have yeah. to uh, dedicate episodes to them. It's, you know what? So I'm a little bit bummed out about the the film as well. I know that's been delayed now until next year, but the whole, again, I think it's going to be like a fun movie, but you're like, you're looking at it going, okay, so we're not going to get a take on Elaine in this, are we? And if we do, she's going to be quite young and it's going to be, it's just going to be weird. It's going to be like uh, young adult romance if she's in it. Mm. I've heard Chloe Frazier is the character that's going to be in it. Okay. Okay. Which, fair enough, because in Uncharted 2, they did establish that they have a little bit of history. They know each other, yeah. You know, they know each other from before, so fair enough. But at the same time, you just kind of, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird direction. Yeah. It's one of those things that I'll watch it, but I'm not, I'm not, if, if it didn't come out, I won't, I actually don't care. Whoa. 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 <laughs> no, you know, whoa, at this whoa. point, I want to see it, but okay. I am a little bit, I kind of have to separate it. I kind of have to go, this is a movie called Uncharted, and I'm going to watch and see what this movie is all about. And trying to separate it from the game as much as possible to try and just take it as its own adventure movie. Good luck. I know, I know. It's, yeah. it's really, yeah, it's, it's like, really I mean, hard. I know. Like, should you do that? Is that a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> no, hopefully they, like... hopefully they'll pull uh, something where it's just like, wow, I really wasn't expecting that, and they really nailed the character. And I think that that those be the, those be the two things that I'm looking for. It's like one something that I don't expect, and two that this is definitely Nathan Drake. And I don't. I think both of those things are going to be impossible for them to live up to. <laughs> like you've set your standards pretty high, Adam. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, you mentioned another couple there, Eric, that always come to my mind if I think about love as explored in video games, which is Titus and Yuna. Yeah. I think if Nate and Elena really represent sort of a, a slightly realistic... Obviously, there's nothing really realistic about games, but... No, but slightly, there, are, there are interactions with each other. Yeah, quite realistic. a realistic kind of grounded... Titus and Yuna kind of represent that sort of fairy tale uh, meant to be, um, I don't know, like fa- total fantasy love. Yeah. yeah. Romeo and Juliet are a bad example. Uh, but you know, I'm thinking along those lines, or it's like, oh wow, it's it's sort of it's written in the stars, kind of a thing, you know that kind of I, shit. Yeah, kind of like love at first sight sort of thing. While ah, and I wouldn't agree with that at all. No, I don't think it's love at first sight. No, but that that kind it's of like enchanted. love at first love at first sight isn't a thing, right? <laughs> it's, just, it's just not it's Mario just and happy. Peach. What? That one sided, Adam. It was one sided. <laughs> <laughs> Mario and Peach, Mario that's the equivalent Mario, of like... You know what? Mario and Peach are the pivotal <laughs> video game couple. <laughs> Link and Zelda. That's, that's the are traditional they, they fantasy romance. Oh, I think Titus and Yuna's relationship is very... You've, like, we, we actually see that develop. Oh, no, I know yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. It, it's yeah. not that fantastical, really. It's no, but probably that's, the most grounded thing in the game. <laughs> within a fantasy, though, like that—that's—that's that's why I think that one is done the best because it's not believable if you watch, uh, if you play other like fantasy games, and yes, they do fall in love straight away, and you're like, okay, you're just telling me they're in love, but okay. And Titus and Yuda, I'm trying to say, is like it's actually done well, but it is that super. Yeah super romantic thing where they end up in a far they end up swimming in a lake and for their first kiss like you know it's like it's that's not relatable no <laughs> it's not okay like right they, yeah. elena's sitting on a couch I, like you know they're swimming underwater and they have their first no, kiss a bit no bookie yeah 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 so you know, and they have their embarrassing moment together as well you know to share that bond you know the uh uh uh, uh. okay that anyway. bit's relatable that is that's pretty relatable <laughs> that bit yeah doing embarrassing shit in public is relatable i think Definitely. Um, being loud and obnoxious. Yes. Yeah. Wait, 
me or <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes no yeah loud and obnoxious that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's but I, yeah i think that down, that yeah. story is told really well in that game um hmm. i don't know if like i always hear when people are talking about the final fantasy games that eight is the love story well, no, I mean it's it's, it's love, love is absolutely explored in even seven, isn't it? Like so, like yeah, it's exploring all of them. But I mean that like when people talk about like the old, like the main theme. Okay. Right, like yeah. the strongest theme. I've often heard eight being described as a love story. By and Squall and Renoa are like, oh, I'll see you later, Eric. Bye, Eric. <laughs> Good talking to you, bro. He's back now. Yeah, I just got allergic to the bullshit you were talking, Chris. I just got to take a moment. <laughs> I had to leave. I had enough of this shit. No, Eric, have you heard that before? Final Fantasy VIII is always described as a love story. And the yes. Squall and Renault, yeah, that, that's primarily what it was. They wanted to write a love story. And every time I look at it and play it a bit of it, I'm like, I don't see it at all. And I play Final Fantasy X, I'm like, I see it straight away. I, I, no, <laughs> I, 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 I see story. it. I see it with the opening scene. That opening cinematic where you have the two guys training and you have like uh-huh. the weird empress woman. Then you have the, the main girl in the blue dress. With the, I see it, right? That it's a, and even the, the iconic imagery for it is the. Her is, and his arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them embracing. Yeah. And yeah, you just play it and you go, what the fuck kind of anime bullshit is this? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a JRPG, I suppose. It's. <laughs> I think that's probably the, the that's that genre. I guess uh, tends to touch on romance more so than Western games. I think Western yeah. games are very action heavy, like combat yes. and stuff. And Eastern games tend to be. I d- yeah, I think Eastern young romance more so than like a developed romance. I think for sure. If there was any um... romance explored in Western games, it tends to be more established ones uh whereas in in like japanese based games um it's because like when you look at like the persona series and stuff like that as well where there is those romantic entanglements but it's like it's generally the the high school kind of yeah, romance well that, yeah to... it's not just their, their video games any their kind of media they tend to focus very much on young people because then they can deal with the development and the growing up of the character but then yeah yes. they they love exploring character development and and like relationships and stuff while also putting up like the weirdest fucking shit <laughs> <laughs> well what do you mean, stark, eh? stark contrast to just like some weird floating high-pitched speaking eyeballs just talking and you're like what the f-? and like a bunch of high school students can rip the shreds it's like this is what the fuck <laughs> it's not in persona uh all of them Everything ever. <laughs> I've ne- I, I, I thought this was a very specific reference, the floating ice thing, and it sounded really specific. <laughs> no, it's just, just general. I, okay. Eastern media. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? They're like, I've never played a JRPG where I'm set, it's set in high school. I've, <laughs> I've that never. Was, but Persona, Persona is a good is a good reference because that that does they do go into high schools. The only one I know school. of. It's the only one I can think of. Where you're actually set in high school. I can't think of any. Oh, I'm sure there's others. <laughs> think about Titus and Yuna. It's a good, it's a really good story, but like Titus, like they're so, it's like, it's like they're made for each other. Their fucking voices are so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, for different reasons though. Like Titus is like, and it's part of the character actually. Like they bring it up, but he's loud and obnoxious, and overly optimistic. Yes. You know? Show off. Overly so. optimistic. Yeah, and it's show off. And Yuna is like too quiet, too soft spoken. Even when she's mad, she never raises her voice or anything. And you're just like, Yeah, Ma, let me get something out of you. <laughs> so in that way, it's it's so weird, like the the kind of bad story. But I do think that um their story is told really well together. And well, spoiler- I think they both see in each other qualities that they each would love to have. I feel like she wishes that she was outside of her destiny and she could be as free and uh loud and un- uncaring of what people think as titus is yes and i think titus sees her in terms of her discipline and wishes that he had similar qualities and i think that's why they're drawn to each other is that there's kind of opposite they can, track sort of well, yeah they can uh vicariously live through each other 
with their and kind of bring out the best in in each other i suppose i think you fucking hit the nail on the head there with that like if anyone has ever (laughs) examined that relationship i think you've just fucking like (laughs) right there because yeah like she's lived her whole life under watch of everyone else and like people have kind of written her life for her in that oh you're lord braska's daughter so you're going to become a summoner aren't you and you're going to fight sin and you're going to die die. (laughs) spoiler um so yeah i think that um i think that that really makes sense then that when she sees him and not only is he the only one that doesn't really know what the fuck is going on so he could talk about shit that's everyone else is literally just talking about the pilgrimage and about sin and the oven and all that and he's just like hey why don't we just fucking kick a blitz ball and hey why don't we just uh you know we should come here more often or let's go for another ride on the shoe pot yeah and she's like why wow, someone actually just wants to live life like um that's mad that's fucking <laughs> crazy that's crazy <laughs> it also probably helps that they're both the, they're both like the same age <laughs> that's probably you know She's not gonna yeah. go with Oren, like. <laughs> She's or, not uh, ready. No, no. Options. He's got that. Oh, I suppose rough, uh, cool that, 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 yeah. mysterious, you know. Yeah. Part, kind part of, of her destiny, I guess, was was to be married off to an older man. So. Um, yes. That that whole thing, that whole story with Seabar is fucking weird. Yeah. Like really weird. I like it though. Like it's it's cool. It's fucked I just up. overall the, the I mean you can't the, you can fault maybe the performances you can fault like parts of the game for sure yeah, you can fault the pacing you can fault possibly the gameplay if you're not into that kind of thing but the overall story is just incredible yeah like the oh, actual solid. themes uh, that it's covering um and even to this day still don't know what the hell's going on really but i love it i know everything that's going on in that game except for whatever the fuck titus is and, I'm probably, <laughs> and i'm still to this day want someone that's who, what i mean who doesn't just have a theory, but who actually understands it to explain it to me. Someone. I don't even know you, if they... You, you want the creator of Titus to essentially explain it to you. I don't think they know. I, don't... <laughs> I no, think they not. just sort of went, yeah, let's let's give it like a rough kind of concept. And let's, let's just kind of... Let's just see what people do with that. But, and spoiler alert, I do think that that moment then in the end, as you watch Titus and Yuna's relationship grow over the whole game, is really powerful when she like... Because she's always so, like, held back. And she finally, like, decides to do something. She, like, runs up to hug him as he's about to disappear. And she falls through him. Mm-hmm. And then she's, like, she realizes that she's going to lose him having done this quest and this pilgrimage. And just decides to tell him for the first time in the whole game, I love you, before letting him go. I think that scene is really powerful once you've watched the whole <laughs> Experience. Eric, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, bro. It's okay, bro. It is though, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's pretty good. It's all it's right. Beautiful. Now. And the music, the music swells and it soars and <laughs> as usually. <laughs> it's music. So, the music gets everyone. If music is good, <laughs> like yeah, just it's always that chair in the cake. It's always that real kind of pinnacle thing that makes people cry. If the music mm-hmm. is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think, well, it's like combined, isn't it? It's like music and imagery. It's like, okay, that imagery is yeah. pretty fucking sad. And then it's like, well, that music is really sad. And then you put the two together. And the go, context. Oh, oh. And the context. And you're like, oh, yeah. this is the, the Triforce of Love. <laughs> <laughs> context, music, and sad shit. Yeah. <laughs> the sad <triforce>. imagery. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, another game that uh, tackles the theme of love in a very interesting way and in a number of ways and we were kind of briefly talking about it before uh, we actually started the episode but the Metal Gear Solid series mm. uh, delves into it like a lot of games delve into it but it actually delves into it quite a bit for a game that's kind of you know more so about themes of war and um, and and identity and politics it does actually deal with love in a very interesting way. Not like it. It's never. I don't think is, is in any of the games. Is it ever just like really straightforward, where anyone is just like, I love this person and they love me, and it's not complicated. <laughs> well, it's, no, because even even Merle and Johnny's, well, even though they get married, it's a it's, it's kind of a complicated one still. Like, yeah, it's like yeah, there is a little bit more straightforward though I think than. But 
yeah, theirs is the most straightforward. Yeah, definitely. But, still not... but it's still yeah. like at the wedding, and how did just meet? Like, <laughs> well, oh, yeah, almost died. <laughs> I had her hostage, and uh, <laughs> she, she took just... my clothes off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's still not a, like a normal. <laughs> no, no, none of them are, are they? His story arc is really good, though, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's just so the fucking fact funny that he's when too, he... The fact that his cowardice is, is what, what saved the world. Is what saved the world, yeah. <laughs> like, that's just. That's funny. Uh, well, he was afraid of needles. He's afraid of needles. They never got the nano machines yeah, yeah, to he, control him. He always made up an excuse to um, prevent himself oh. from getting the nano machines, which is why he's always shitting himself. I, you know, I don't know if we brought that up when we were talking about Metal Gear Solid 4. We were talking about how fucking genius Kojima is a rapid <laughs> But he gave the shitting joke throughout Context. the game a backstory. <laughs> he, he went that far. Like, he explained yeah. the shitting jokes. <laughs> but I think uh, in the MDS series, like, I mean, there's a good few uh, romances mm-hmm. that are, are, are really good stories but i think the one that tops it is otacon and and uh sniper wolf because when we're talking yeah. about the uh, triforce of love here that absolutely plays effect here when yeah, yeah. yeah he she like the imagery of her just after being gunned down and her blood soaked in the snow and him trying to understand why this is why this had to happen to him yeah yeah and then the music kicks in oh, it's, it's like, amazing it's so good, and Wonderful. I think to this day, it's it's a lot of people's favorite scene in the Metal Gear Solid saga is the death of Sniper Wolf. Like yes. for a lot of people, it, it's it's you know highly praised, um, but it's such an interesting story choice. Like Otacon is literally being held hostage by these horrible people, mm-hmm. but she treats him nicely for whatever reason. I, is it clear that Sniper Wolf felt anything for Otacon? Or is it that totally part's not fair, but Otacon not, absolutely not. felt for her. Yes, yeah. And like I always that always registered with me when he's sort of talking about her on the codec, and then he's like he gets to the point where he begs you not to kill her. Mm-hmm. And he's so conflicted because he's trying to help you stop these guys, but at the same time he's like, Please don't kill her. Like she's actually not she's not bad. She's not a bad person. And he's yeah. like Otacon, As far as I remember, like she, she, she did she did used to like <laughs> walk through the caves and she would, like, they would, uh, she'd give them the handkerchief and so that they could pet the wolves together and she would tell, t- they, they would exchange stories that way. So there's, like, there's clear moments between the two. Yeah, yeah. And why she felt anything for Otacon, that's, it's not clear. But there's obviously a level of humanity in her that perhaps she was hoping that this could have been, that, that could have gone somewhere, perhaps, maybe. Maybe, maybe she could have left the life and and yeah maybe again maybe it's sort of was, a, was the bit that was saving her from this or something I, I don't know like maybe it was sort of like an opposite thing like she's always surrounded by people who just want to kill and now she sees Otacon who just wants to to build he doesn't want to destroy like everyone else she would have ever known so yeah. it was kind of like an opposite thing like so she would have been probably as as a as a female soldier probably surrounded by a lot of testosterone driven guys. And therefore, now yeah. she meets Otacon, there's possibly that. Yeah, not. there's probably the the fact that he's not a very manly man in the kind of a Hollywood action yeah. sense. Yeah, um, he's a much more sensitive guy. That even her being a woman who is absolutely not uh, not a very sensitive soul either. She's a fucking. She's a hard ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's one of the best soldiers in, in Foxhand. But perhaps that's something that she never really got to experience is this more sensitive, intimate. And perhaps there's a relationship there that, uh, like, the way she's, like, kind of looking out for this guy. Like, this is a one opportunity to look after someone that perhaps that gives her a feeling that she had with, uh, um, well, I suppose Big Boss when she, when he took her in. Yes. See, so I always a kind moment of, thought, of kindness. I always kind of thought that, like, how she viewed Otacon was as like a wounded puppy. Yeah. That that needed looking after, that needed kind of nurture. Everyone else, like even like you know your your Donald Anderson and your Kenneth Baker's, 
they they might not be physical fighters, but they were tough and they would probably fight back verbally or give threats or whatever. And Otacon was like the one totally like innocent soul probably in the entire place. Um who still like was just like, oh no, why this is like a peace robot we're making. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like totally naive of, of the world around him. And I, I don't know if she saw him as like an innocence that needed to be kind of it's like we Looked should preserve her. this because he's actually everyone else here is kind of in the business and they kind of know what they're in for. Whereas he's actually a civilian. Yeah. If you know what I mean? Like she is a I, military woman. Kind of so. almost like I don't know, for some reason the image of the rose in Beauty and the Beast. For some reason, that kind of reminded me of that. Oh! <laughs> L- looking looking oh. after the rose and make sure the rose doesn't, doesn't That's wither. That's fucking deep, though! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a character named Rose in Metal Gear Solid. There is. There is. A yeah. love interest of That's Ryan. not a very good romance. No, that one's... That's yeah, see you know what I mean? That's yeah, good. see, like, you yeah, go through them and you go... These, these but then again, the only one that we really know is actually an artificial one anyway, so... We don't know, Rose. No, yeah. no, we kind of got to know the other one. It was... Well, yeah, playing, hold on. Playing Rose, with have, Colonel. Ro- <laughs> kinda. Yeah, Rose, Rose had a good relationship with Colonel there, you know what I mean? She did. Again, it was, it was an a cover, man. It was a cover. Everything we know about Rose is artificial. We actually don't know what she's like. Man, it's so deep. Look <laughs> 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 this like Metal Gear Solid fucking rabbit hole again. Like, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Nothing's what I, I mean, know. I mean, when it comes to, to the subject of love and Metal Gear Solid, most topics are probably going to include Otacon. Yes. Yeah. yeah they yeah, have his relationship, step role, his relationship with Emma, his relationship with his own yeah, stepmother. Yeah, but I think Eva's, Eva's relationship with uh, Big Boss is, um, is a really interesting one. Because she never, and it it's so over the top, James Bondy. Yeah, but then, See, I never believed it. That's the thing about that. Yeah, one. but there was that the the you know she did actually feel something for him. So she there was a con- a conflict there. Yeah, she wasn't expecting to fall in love. She knew what the mission was, which was to pretend like you're in love with this guy to get what you want. But then she really wasn't expecting to actually fall in love with him. So that made the mission very difficult. Yeah. Do you know what fucking makes, just as you brought him up, Big Boss so interesting in Snake Eater? Mm. Is that he's got all the tough bravado of, of Solid Snake being the same voice actor and stuff, and kind of that age. Yeah. But he's so naive. He's so incredibly naive. Like, he's sort of, even though he's, um, like, he's not like Otacon in terms of innocence. Like, he, he kills people, and he knows about missions and, and fighting for yeah, honor. He definitely has experience. Right? Yeah. His experience, but in in the world that he's actually in, in the world of espionage, he's so innocent. He so believes that we're the good guys and they're the bad guys, and that's sort of yeah. It. And yeah. that's why it gets so complicated for him as it goes on. It's so interesting. And you can see why he ends up going down the path he does because he, yeah. you know once that world is opened up to you. We've started this rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. That, once, that's what once makes... the, once the whole once the doors of Mel Gasol open up. The uh, topic yeah. of Valentine's Day is at the window. No, no, no. We're talking about how much we love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, no, it's that's that's kind of why I I never felt like I needed another. I did, I felt like I never needed more big boss games. I felt. Oh like, no, no. I yeah, felt like yeah. his path was perfectly implied by the end of Snake Eater. Yeah. That, after that, I was like, oh, my imagination is able to do the rest. Yeah, yeah. The rest is a clear, a clear and then, kind of and then they do kind of explain it in four as well. Eva kind of explores, explains yeah. a bit more. Yeah. So you're I like, actually, yeah, I, I guess. actually felt the more games they made about Big Boss because they felt like they needed to introduce more things. I actually felt it got more complicated. You know, it oh, was it like, did, yeah. oh, it's like you haven't explained it further. You've actually just made it way more. It's like, okay, so when did this happen? <laughs> when, when when does he meet this? Or when does he do that? Or when when does that happen? When does he meet Frank Yeager? When does he meet Sniper Wolf? Now you've just it's like, I could have mapped that all out in my own head and been totally satisfied. And now it's like, what the fuck is going on? Um, the one relationship uh, from Otacon I did not believe for a second and I felt so forced, but just so much going on in the game anyway, is Otacon and Naomi in MGS4. Yeah. That one yeah. didn't for me at all. Well, I feel like that's kind of the point. Naomi is quite the schemer, and I feel like she was using her looks to get what she wants out of Otacon. So Otacon was 
probably quite lonely desperate. and vulnerable <laughs> and a bit desperate. I know. No, I, I got that. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, then they kind of want, um, like it, it's fine if it is just that. And that scene earlier on works. It makes sense to me. It's fine. But it's when she's sort of dying and looking into the camera and she's talking directly to Otacon above anyone else. And yeah. he's looking at the camera to her and there's supposed to be this like emotional resonance that it's, I mean, it's uncomfortable for anyone who knows her, I suppose, but it's just, it seems so like, look at poor Otacon getting his heart broken once more. And uh, I don't know. It felt so forced in the moment. I, yeah. I, I didn't believe it didn't that work for me. a second. Yeah. No. Uh, it didn't, didn't. What's bad is uh, like when when we're talking about relationships in in video games, uh, for a lot of players, they will probably have something like um, some form of relationship in uh, Mass Effect or mm-hmm. uh, some form of relationship in um, well, name any decision based RPG, right? And and but that's so unique to a player that yeah. I think. I don't want to not mention that those are possibilities, but it's very difficult to pinpoint that this was a good relationship because you may not have gotten it. Yeah, <laughs> you see, know, it may I not was, have happened. I was thinking about that during the week and everything about something like Mass Effect or even right. in Skyrim, the way you can marry you ever like it. You know I mean? yeah. And even like when you're playing the game, when you're playing the Dawn Guard DLC in Skyrim, because we have to mention it. Uh, you're always traveling with uh, Take a shots, folks. <laughs> uh, you're always traveling with this character called Serana. Yeah, yeah. Which is a fan. She's a fantastic character, but because the game is choice based, or the same Mass Effect, the way you have choices of romances depending on your your gender or sexuality. Yeah, I I wouldn't count them based on exactly that. Or you the Sims. I mean? Well, or you Sims, see, like, well, you mean, see, with Mass Effect, I actually I would count it. Not that we can anyone can definitively say that oh this relationship is handled particularly well right because but they handle the topic of love or kind of sexual relations very well yeah they just put it into the player's hands um Mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest things people talk about when they play mass effect is oh who did you romance yeah Yeah. i've heard it so many times like who did you romance and people compare and contrast and that's and it goes beyond, you know, they, 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 because they put it in your hands, they go beyond um, uh, what some might consider the traditional boundaries of, of who loves who. And, you know, like they even, like they, that game is so inclusive, is what I'm trying to say, Mass Effect. Mm-hmm. Um, it just goes beyond, because it's like, it's in the future, there's so many species, there's, you, you can be with anyone or anything, whoever you fall in love with. And, like, even Joker falls in love with, a robot. A robot. And the robot starts to love him back when it starts learning what love is. And then asks you questions like, do you think I should try telling some jokes? Do you think he would like that? <laughs> I was like, uh, you have to give like love advice to the robot about how to fucking uh, woo your, your fucking pilot. Pilot, yeah. So I think it handles the theme really well. You yeah, know? It's just yeah that probably it, better it, than it's most um, precision-based games. Yeah, I would think where, so. Where, where relationships are involved. Yeah. Because uh, there's, yeah, there's a... I, I suppose it's because it's scripted as well. It's not like, you don't have infinite choices. You have, like, a number of choices, and yeah. it eventually has some form of conclusion. But it, the way it gets there is a lot more uh, impressive, yeah. I think, than most I'll, other games. I also like that by the third game, by Mass Effect 3, while you would have went on your romance or romances that some of your crewmates are also romancing each other as well which really brings them more to life and treats them more as as, as actual living characters rather than just these npcs but the interesting thing about it is like from game to game like you could decide to be you know to sleep around with the different character you know change character in each game if you want or you could continue a romance with one character like throughout the games Mm-hmm. Like if 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 say um, Tally is the person that you're you're into, uh, you, you can't you can't romance Tally in the first one. Can you not? No. So in the first, I thought now you we're talking about Mass Effect. So uh, in the first <laughs> one, as uh, if you're going for the females, you can only romance Liara and Ashley. Oh, okay. 
And if you're going for the males, you can only romance, I think, it's Garrus and Caden. I mean, Garrus is cool, but he's nowhere near as attractive as Liara, no matter what way you look at it. Ah, no, no, no. Different species. Uh, <laughs> only in the second and third one can you actually romance uh, Tali. So the only character you can romance throughout all of them uh, is the uh, two, Garrus and Liara, are the only ones you can romance throughout the whole trilogy. Wow. But she doesn't really play a role. Liara, unless you get have the DLC, she's not really in. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we will, everyone will have the DLC in the Legendary Edition. Hey. Fuck yeah. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait. Oh, no, I was just thinking about I these. I just wish it was coming story. I, just, I was just thinking about the story arcs for these characters. Yeah. As well. yeah. And I was like, they're, they're, they're so good. But that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about that. We're talking about romance and Valentine's. <laughs> I'm really mad about that. <laughs> yeah, because now I wish I was talking about this. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Well, tangents are okay. Tangents are all right. I know we can't go. Like we we could. Yeah, yeah. The last time. we could go on. It's like, dangerous. Them. Yeah, it's dangerous when you open that door, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Keep oh. on forever. The thing is, I, I think I, that um the because I I think we're kind of. Not struggling to find uh, what to talk about in this in this kind of topic. Yeah. But that there's no substantial, right? I think I think we've pretty much mentioned the substantial ones. Now maybe other people have ones that yeah. like really stand out to them. Like, but yeah. I think it's fair to say that romance in video games it hasn't been handled well. It's generally used as plot devices, like uh, you know things like oh, your loved one is missing and you got to go into this creepy town and try find her kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, yeah. you're telling me, well, I would love to see the, like, the, how, how did that relationship, like, kind of unfold or parts yes. during the game where, um, you know, show me that these two uh, did actually, like, what is the connection? Yeah. You know, make me care to find this person as opposed that's, to telling you know me what? I need to. I think you've touched on something that's really interested because i'm thinking at myself like okay i there's games that if you change the type of relationship we're talking about if you were to talk about familial love mm-hmm. i think there's really strong standout examples of that in games yeah and yet romantic love yeah it seems to be there's only a few and it seems to be that it's only a small element of the game and not like the strongest theme of the game but like even like and this isn't like the only old games did the whole damsel and the love is off screen type of thing um final fantasy 15 oh, we're yeah. supposed to believe that for the whole game like that noctis is in love with this luna freya character and uh, when she's taken away it's supposed to be you know the, like really heartbreaking mm. and like I felt nothing for that character like yeah she's, she's it, not in it like she's not doesn't exactly not play it. the same she's supposed to be kind of similar to yuna yeah yeah, but, or Aerith even. Or even Aerith, but shows up about as much as um I fucking don't know. Not a lot anyway. Like you know, <laughs> you know what, right, Final Fantasy Seven remake. You She's in the how... game as much as Leslie. <laughs> no, nah, Leslie's in it more. <laughs> like I was about to say, like I was about to compare it even to Red like Red Thirteen. He's only at the end of the game, but he's in it longer than than Luna Prey. Like she has fuck all screen time which yeah. is really weird because she's such a well established character in Kingsglaive the film film yeah yeah but that's the thing it felt like you needed to watch the film to understand her and that's that's it's not okay but fair enough if you do it and you go okay now I have a grasp of her in that film there is no time spent between her and Noctis no so the thing that's still left out of the whole story is the relationship between the two who are spo- like the quest is to go meet Luna Freya and get married and then shit goes sideways, right? That's actually the point of the whole thing, is your three mates are escorting you to meet your bride-to-be so you can get married. And create peace between two And it's such a weird nations. story, because it's supposed to be that, yeah, it's supposed to be that you're getting married to this girl to create a peace treaty, right? So it's like, okay, it would be more interesting if he's not in love with her. And he doesn't want to do this, and she doesn't want to do it, and then maybe they get to know each other, and there's like an interesting, and you know, maybe they don't get together, but they get to respect each other because they come from similar backgrounds or something. Like they could have told a really, 
But the fact that they are in love with each other, they're childhood friends because we're told so, and they're being forced to marry. It's like, what is... Like, okay, so are the Empire all that bad at the moment? Like, what is it? It's just really messy storytelling that doesn't... You're not really... I feel like it doesn't engage you enough. Yeah, it's oh. interesting. Like, what, it's, that's one of those things... Like, if you were told uh, to set up a, a relationship between characters, if you were told these two have been friends uh, since childhood and <laughs> you're trying to get to that person, it's like, that's that's fine. Or these two have been enemies all their life and they're looking to destroy each other. Okay, that's fine. Like, those type of setups are okay in terms of, like, we're just wanting to get to the, the meat of the main story and we've established a relationship with just this small little backstory. But uh, love is one of those things that just doesn't work in that way. And it's probably mm-hmm. because it's way easier to make friends, it's way easier to make enemies than it is to find love. Yeah. So I think that's something that you actually have to show develop. I don't think people can accept that these you know people are in uh, in love like just 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 like that it's just it's a it's a complicated thing that takes time because obviously within love itself it's like there's fallen outs and there's all kinds of struggles and that's what establishes that relationship that's why like drake and elena's relationship works so damn well in on charter four is because it's not perfect it's really not perfect there's like in friendship there's like an absolute Hey, there's fallen outs there can be but generally it's like all right we're friends and just whatever it doesn't hurt so much if a friend if you fall out with a friend as much as it would fall out with someone that you love and with enemies there's an absolute there's like mm-hmm. you know you may end up having to work with them a little bit or whatever but end of the day you're always going to be enemies and the end of the day you're always going to be friends possibly but with the the, the kind of a, a love relationship it's it's so damn complicated that that piece has to be the setting almost or part of the story. You can't just in passing tell us that. Yeah, which, which, which is why another modern game um, that only came out last year that's progressive in so many ways. Um, but I feel like this it's another area where it's I just I, I don't really believe it. And that's the love between Ellie and Dina in The Last of Us Part 2. I was oh, like, yes. oh, you're telling me they're in love. I see a scene where they're kissing. They're hanging out. Cool. I didn't see it happen, though. And this is like, like this is your strength. This is what you're so good at. It's like, you know, I, f- I saw Joel I, I be- like fall in love with Ellie as a child in the first game, you know, and it was done so amazingly well. It's like, why didn't you give me enough time to like hang out with Dina that maybe like we're not together yet and we're going to get together later and, and build up yeah. to it so that yeah, I, I really don't... feel it. I, I feel I... it. I felt that as well with um, Abby and Owen. Right. So, I, okay. I, yeah, I, I was totally yeah, like, I get that opposites attract, but she is such a depressing negative shit that I just can't <laughs> see how Owen would like her. I could see them being friends, but that romanticness, I could, I could, Owen was just way too upbeat and he's way too kind of positive. Well, actually, you know what? You're right there. Like their chemistry came off as friends yeah people just hanging out which obviously like people who are in love are friends yes, there's a friendship but there's something more than that because otherwise you are just friends you, you can you can tell by their tone and their body language but so i kind of believe so when they separated and he went with your with the other one i was like right i believe that right because they just didn't work it felt like they, they were trying to make something work and it didn't work so i believed that that when they separated but then him still wanting her i was like nah, i don't really believe no i just don't believe it because i don't see it doesn't yeah. work. So I like it seems like there's probably way more examples of, of that as well where um fa- like relationships that just don't seem to work translate in, on in video in games. games. Yeah. There's probably like, more way more examples of that than there is examples of like uh, really, really good relationships. It's like mm. they're in love just because we're told they are. But they're yeah. we can't you can't see it. So then maybe love can't bloom on the battlefield. You know, because <laughs> games it can. Are... it can if we can see it happening. <laughs> yeah, you have like... to, you have to see it happen, don't you? It has to, which is why, for example, the Mass Effect one is such a good example of it, because you you make it happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? They, like, they work really, really well. Put it in your in the players' hands, and, like, and uh, many people do say that. It's like that's a selling point for that game. 
is yeah is that is that mechanic how well it plays off how well it works yeah because so. like you decide what way you want to go about flirting with someone and if they flirt back you take a bit of interest and you know and if you fuck yeah. up they might reject the, you you know miranda the, could reject you because of one decision you're like all the work i put in are you kidding me <laughs> uh, that, that's like that's like what is actually really funny in the basis of you can flirt actually you can do an all them things you can flirt with all the romance options yeah all the like to the point of where they all start going so who 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 are you actually wanting here like in mass effect one so i was first time like one of the times i played i played it several times i i end up like equally romancing Lyra and ashley because i was like i wonder what happens if you do yeah and then they both walk into the room after like a meet with the cancer i'm like oh boy okay what's going on here <laughs> and, and they're, and they're oh, pretty much asking good. They're actually asking me like one who, yeah who pick one who, who are you interested in and one of the options is can i not have you both <laughs> so i was like let's do that option see what happens and actually actually gets pissed off and leaves and then Le- because liara's a bit like yeah i don't see a problem with that but then ashley fucks off so then by default you're left with liara which i'm not sure. playing with but i thought it was even good that they even had that because that created a depth to the characters as well yeah yeah I was sure that if the game was just that, like if it was just a romance game, then it's like I don't know, like because then your your the whole objective of the game is just to uh, uh, to try try get with someone. Right. Whereas this is like you know the the whole purpose of the game is is like a more of a life and death or a, you know universe threatening situation, but there's still you know you still want to live. So there's still things to to do or relationships to establish yeah. on the journey. Um, yes. So I think yeah, it's probably Mass Effect is probably the most effective game in handling uh, the most Mass Effective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like... although we can't, you can't give like 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 we we did with Metal Gear Solid and, and Uncharted and, and 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 Final Fantasy, we can't give specific like why the relationship is great. But um, in terms of giving you options, it's yeah. definitely the and best. establishing quite unique characters that different different focal points work for different people. It's not just like you know, it's not all. It's not always going to be the same thing. Yeah, like. yeah. So we're not trying yeah. to gear you towards one person. It's yeah. it's up to you. That I, yeah. it really who you resonate with more. Like it really plays into say. the whole the role playing thing, though, right? Like. I think of all the role-playing games I've ever played, Mass Effect is probably the most role play e game I've ever played. In that uh, you have lots of choices to make, you have decisions to make. It's up to you what kind of relationships you build, both romantic and friendship. Um, like you know, you could fall out with your crew. They still have to mm-hmm. follow your orders, but like there's a tension there now when if yeah. you both try to talk to them and the, you know, and you have to manage all that. And you actually like I found uh, playing Mass Effect two the most, I suppose was that I actually cared to check in on my crew in between missions. You know, that's role-playing. I was really playing the character of Shepard and checking on my friends, so to speak. Or I was, like, checking on the girl I was interested in or whatever. Like, that that's... It achieved that so well. I'm looking forward to, like, doing that again. <laughs> in the Legendary Edition. Come out sooner, will you? We have nothing to play. I guess uh, it's because then, in like, in other RPGs... Although there's uh, probably more opportunities to uh, get relationships with whoever the hell you want, but the it's the response, it's the response itself, the feedback you get, and mm. the continuous thing, the continual kind of possibly the chase or the continual kind of keep keeping up with that relationship, um, isn't as emotive or as effective as what Mass Effect does, just because it does have the voice acting stuff like that. Like compare it to San Andreas's relationships. <laughs> well, no. <You> know? <laughs> well no there's nothing quite as romantic as <laughs> it's like gta 5 you know you go down to the, the strip joint to see can you get a girlfriend out of the dancer like you know <laughs> yeah i don't think grand theft auto is a very good example of love <laughs> and okay. nor is it a good example of violence so no, it's yeah, and it's, we can't, it's not uh, right. We it can't isn't constantly critique it. No, no, it's just a bit of crack, lads. 
it's like, yeah. Grand Theft Auto is the most, it's a bit of crack like game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like out yeah. there. Like it's just, it's like all of this is just for fun. It's not. Yeah. Well, it's just it's a really good satire of the kind of American way of life. So, like, yeah, in it when you're tackling like the romance in GTA, they're not really doing it for love. They're doing it for to have a bit of like, you know, the best looking accessory, essentially. Like, you know what I mean? That's kind of almost the way it is. And yeah, when you're, yeah, yeah. When you're like the violence is over the top and yeah, like, the no crimes respect. are over the top. Like, no, no, no has any no respect one has, for each other or anything. No. All, all they care about is that that getting that big nice house on the hill with a fancy car and having a shit ton of money and everything like yeah, that. yeah. And now i'm wearing the nice expensive suits which is the american dream i suppose so it's a satire <laughs> of that <laughs> <laughs> do you think then that uh i think i think we've kind of established that love as a theme is not explored overly well in games like so there's some games that stand out as examples of doing it but it's not like like I we bet you about... there is, there's definitely like an indie game out there that we haven't touched on or discovered or we, we are just unaware of. But I bet you like there's a bunch of indie games that cover the topic really well. Yeah. And I, suppose, oh, I suppose saying love is kind of the wrong thing to say because like there's so many different types of that emotion. And like, again, yeah, yeah. Like, like I would we're say... We're not talking about massive... Master Chief and Cortana kind of love here. It was just, so we're we're talking about actual romance. I was about to say I'm not talking about like, you know, Kratos and his son love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm talking. Oh well, no, <laughs> Master Chief and Cortana kind of actually are in love with each other in a really weird way. Yeah, but I, I don't. Yeah, but I don't. I think mean, it's a romantic can't. one. Yeah. It could be. Maybe Is that more of a? I don't think it's romantic. Is that more of like companionship thing? Yeah. It's yeah. like they're both just lonely. Yeah, Frodo and Sam kind of a thing. So actually, I think this this video game series does a very good job actually with romance. And yes. again, it's a very different type of romance if you interpret it as a form of romance. But the relationship in the Arkham games between Batman and the Joker. That's oh. not romance though. That's the, I, can't, I, can't I don't know, whatever romance. Joker calls... No matter what time of the day it is or night, Batman will always be there <laughs> to, to give him a good old pounding. I think <laughs> oh, there's Jesus a difference Christ. between romance and lust, Eric. Okay. I think that there is. Batman and Joker, Joker lusts, uh, Batman perhaps have a very interesting relationship. I don't think it's a romantic one. <laughs> I don't think. Oh, I um, think it's the equivalent of you know um, a patient who. Um, who who always feel not necessarily that they're hypochondriac, but in, in they they love the attention of constantly going to the doctor, of someone looking after them. I mean that's right. the equivalent. Yeah. Of Joker, Batman, Joker loves the amount of attention that he can get by continuously like, you know, is he that mad or does he put it on? You know that kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I fucking love it. Which makes him even more mad, which is it's such a yeah, weird it's, cycle oh, of fucking it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> it's fucking, that's, the way he goes on is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Let me mad. tell you. I've He's had a break Joker that lad. I've had a breakthrough about the Joker, you know that? <laughs> the way he goes on. It's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he needs help. <laughs> Someone should make a movie about that. Oh wait. <laughs> Um, I actually thought you were gonna try like something that's like, oh fuck yeah, I never thought of that. And then <laughs> Joker and Batman, I'm like, no, that's yeah, I don't think so. That's not quite right. Yeah, but there you go. Like, there's so many games where you play it, and actually, they're like, it's kind of interesting in one way that, um, no matter whether they do it well or not, movies always feel a need, or at least for the most part to have a love story in there somewhere even if it's not the central yeah i, mean, I was that was something right? i was going to mention but video games don't and yeah. actually tr- nearly try to avoid it <laughs> is what it seems like yeah. you look at a game yeah. like the arkham games it's like like even like okay so catwoman and, and talia are both in arkham city it was like well, very minor very minor roles 
you know, yeah. realistically. Like, they don't feel the need. It's like they're just in there because they're comic book characters. There's a long history and they've kind of fit in with the, the story that they're telling. But their relationship with Batman is not explored at all. Mm. You, know? you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's so many games like that. Uh, Kratos gets a whole trilogy of revenge without ever meeting anyone that he could in any way fall in love with, you know? It's like... <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, like I, we can like, say that as well with um, in films, every time there's like a female brought on in in the script somewhere, nine times out of ten they're there to romance the main lead actor, right. and it's just the most fake and bullshitty role mm-hmm. that you could give anyone really. Yeah. Whereas in in video games. We could easily name a bunch of badass female characters, and not oh, yeah. a single one of them uh, are probably in a romance. Yeah, at all. That's the thing. Whereas we're struggling to find <laughs> a romance relationship. And that, that, and that, that's that's fucking interesting. And actually, you look at the first. Let's look at the first Resident Evil. Right. Yeah. You've got two main protagonists, right? It's PS1 era too. We're talking the 90s. It's not like yeah. we're all fucking super progressive in the world of Hollywood at this point. Yeah, you've got this video game. It's got these two leads, a male and a female. Mm. And like their relationship is completely professional. Yeah, I can <laughs> and I, <laughs> I mean it. No, but seriously yeah. like crazy. That's my <laughs> You guys are nuts. <laughs> Are you telling me they don't bang at the end? <laughs> <laughs> but same, yeah, they can't begin... make a movie out of this. Even, even in the fifth one, they do that because Sheva asks Chris like what Jill means to her. He's like, "Oh, we're just just partners. That's yeah, it. just my partner." Yeah. Versus when they have to make the movie, right? Then they make the character of Alice, and she has a fucking romance in the movie. Yeah. 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 It's so unnecessary. It's like I was watching the. Um, the director's and writer's commentary of the desolation of Smaug. And they're talking about the sequence when Tauriel is healing Killy. Oh, right. It is Killy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And they're like going on about this, like, you know, adding in the love relationship and stuff. And, and Philippa Boynes, she says, you know, because you need this kind of element in this, you know? I'm just sitting here going, no, you fucking. No, you do not at all. You don't. Do you, need this. you really you don't. You do yeah. not need yeah. a love story in a fantasy about people trying to establish a home for themselves. That is not what you need. <laughs> like oh. they, they could have just had maybe that she learns the dwarves aren't as uh, the brutes that she probably grew up thinking that they were. And, and just have a respect. A, she, like she's such a badass character, really yeah. well portrayed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they go ahead and ruin her with just the most basic Worst. basic of storylines that you could that you could in, incorporate and i suppose one of the strengths of video games is that we see the like not just love relationships but relationships with friends relationship with enemies relationship with um even even the, the more progressive relationships as well as tackle and establish way better yeah. Than films and TV show. Could I would ever agree. Imagine of tech. Yeah. I would agree. And I've always kind of like, I, I kind of have a feeling that sometimes video games are a, a direct response. Because, like, you know, when you're playing them, that the developers, they draw so much inspiration. Like, they're huge fans of movies and literature yeah. and pop culture. And because you always see it come in, and eventually games actually do affect movies as well, right? But I, I've always felt like sometimes with games, they're literally protesting against some of the tropes of Hollywood when they make their game. Mm. Right? Yeah. Not protesting. Maybe that's not the right word, but like breaking breaking the mold. Breaking I think the... so. Yeah, I think so. Like I always... probably as well to do with like the um the aim, I guess, the objective of like a character in a movie versus a character in a game. In a game, like, because when you think about it, right, so games then overplay violence more so than film and TV show ever does, right? But can yeah. you imagine a game without violence? I think it would actually be impossible, right? Because even. Wait, violence, right. What do you mean? Violence of any kind? Like, Tetris is not. Um, 
Yeah, but Journey. like Tetris still. Firewatch, The Witness. Yeah. yeah. What, what, oh, do gotta, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? I gotta pull a like. I'm gonna pull like a page out of like set like parallel and just start naming loads of things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't mean violence in terms of like you have to blow up things as head, heads and 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 right. stuff like that because even Beat Saber has a level of violence to it. Right. Like, oh, do you it, just mean it's, it's conflict uh, yeah. more so than Con- violence. Yeah, okay. There's conflict. Yeah, there there has to be because it's like that's the whole point of the you know the progression and earning points and mm-hmm. that's the objective. The completionist thing is the objective. Whereas in movie, what's the end game of a character? And I guess they've ran out of ideas other than just beating the bad guy and getting the girl. Um, some films tackle that a little bit better than others, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, they- they seem to can't they can't quite get past that like i think in terms of like the games still have so much more to explore yes yeah or they can do a, quite a lot with the idea of you know that progression and what you can earn because that on a although it's the same pretty much for every game but the visual and metaphorical for that is is different every time but movies i think they've kind of run their course a little bit in what they can establish right I think that's what kind of makes um, something like uh, Dawn of the Planet Apes and War for Planet Apes a bit different. Is that it is just a, a journey of character and a journey of parallels rather than the whole beating the bad guy and getting the girl at the end. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And now, yeah, there's always exceptions to, to, to the rule. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, but I think it's it's most prevalent in the action genre. That's the one where it's like, it's like how many, like, where it's like, like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War of the Planet of the Apes are they action movies? There's action elements in it, but are they action movies? Or are they more, they're kind of more dramas, I think. Okay, better the, better example would be, I suppose, what makes, again, a lot of people like the films would be John Wick. They're action films. He beats right. the bad guy. But there is no girl at the end. There's no romance to it. You know what I mean? Right. And he's lost, there isn't he's, the first one, though. He lost And her, I, right? that's why I think that Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 are very poor in comparison. Like, Chapter 3 is not a good movie. Like, it's <laughs> good crack, but it's uh, not, a, not a good fucking shame on you. It's not. It's not a good film. Like, there's no Why? real, like, kind of goal. And it's okay, just, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's in, an excuse in, for more action, basically. In yeah, in John Wick, one, there is the girl. Yes, I get that. But she dies, and he's just wanting to mourn her, and then is brought on this. So it's it's not yeah. exactly Transformers Tree. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you yeah. know, yeah, the, yeah. the bad guy just to get that girl. Like, you know, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah, not that. It's yeah. it's. It's something that I think is a bit more personal, a bit more relatable. His relationship, even though the wife is dead, that sort of relationship, you understand that more. Yeah. Well, it's not really when that because the relationship is present, even though it's not there. Yeah. They they uh, really yeah. use they visuals. Well. They they use visuals to really tell their kind of relationship. And everything. Well, I think there's something interesting. Just to go back to the games, um, in that. <laughs> Like I wonder, was there ever a conversation like, hey, what if we made a game where over the course of the game, like like the whole point of the game is that you fall in love with this person, and that's the reward at the end is that you've fallen in love. I wonder if anyone, went, who the fuck would want to play that? <laughs> like, I wonder if that's ever been a conversation. It's like, they're like, well, okay, but who do you shoot? Who do you fight? It's like, no, 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 you just that's that's the point of the game. We're just you know, there's plenty of shooting games, plenty of fight. Like, let's just make a game about just you know falling in love with a guy. Hey, what do you do? What to do in the game? I don't know. Maybe you go on like dates and shit. You're like, who the fuck? Just go do that in real life. Yeah, I, might, I, wanna I, I think it would be, God. I wanna, be difficult. Yeah, it because would. even in a game like uh, Life is Strange, there's right. still I was con- just thinking of that one. There's still conflict yeah. in that, even though there's like, yeah, that's that's the closest to what you're kind of getting at. There. Yeah, and I, I'm not even saying that I want that. I'm just saying it's so interesting. It's like, like if you look at it, and maybe the lack of um like big soaring examples of it is a result of it's like well. To be honest with you, like love is a very prevalent thing out there in the world, and it's like you know, for a lot of people, it's something that maybe they have or they're they're aspiring to in real life. It's like that's not what I want to turn on a video game for. Possibly, I want to escape reality. I want to turn into you know a, a demon slayer or a yeah, god killer, think, or you know, like I want coming, to be in the army or coming mm-hmm. back to a little full circle here. I think that's what makes Mass Effect so good for people. Is that not only are they escaping their reality, their 
they're they're entering a new reality. It's still quite believable. Things that they can do in reality, or at least want to be able to do in reality, they can now do this with a little bit more ease because you have options and know what the right thing is to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't stray too far from the path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of like, yeah, I, I know. If I just go up right, yeah, that's that's probably the best option. Or right. down right, and uh, it's definitely that like depending on the genre because romance obviously can slow down the action. Heavily. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the games that we've mentioned that it seems to work in are games that are quite cinematic, and yep. they have a they have a story to tell. Yes, mm. and usually have a long time to do it. Like, so mm. if I was to come back to say, like, I think in terms of that, you know. Yeah, Uncharted, I think, is a very, be- it's a believable relationship. In terms of, like, fantastical love, ooh, happy Valentine's Day on a card thing, Titus and Yuna seems to be the one that, for me, would resonate the most. And it takes a long time, you know? Like, there's interest there at the start, for sure. There's, oh, she's pretty, and oh, he's kind of hot. But, like, they're both living, like, if you look at everyone else around them, like... <laughs> so there's an interest, for sure, but the actual love part just comes from, like... Like so many cutscenes of the two of them ending up on their own, talking to each other as they're looking out the world. Yeah, you know, on, on their this grand adventure that you play over fucking hours and hours and hours. So, uh, I, it takes time. I think is what, what it is. Anything, anything where the love is just established off screen, it's just like, sure, okay, I'll just accept it. They're in love. I don't know why. Mm. I don't know anything about them. They're just in. That doesn't affect your okay. actions then. As no, it doesn't. And then and you realize that that's not the point of the game. So that's fine. Whereas for some games, like if it is the point and if it needs to have an emotional resonance by the end of it, then you realize like like Nate and Elena's one, you need to understand that Nate does love Elena and that Elena really loves Nate so that by the end, he can finally let this shit go because he realizes what he's about to lose. Yeah. I'm saying, man. Yeah. I think the only game where I played where it's like, oh, you have to you know they're already a love. The, the, the relationship is already established, and it, it tends to work in its favor. There may be loads, but the yeah. one that stands out to me is uh, Resident Evil Seven. That tends to work because it gives me enough reason to know why exactly he is willing to walk into this incredibly creepy looking building. But then mm-hmm. that quickly turns into okay, fuck you, bitch, I'm out of here. You know, yeah, it doesn't yeah. take long before oh. you're. Now it's not I'm going in anymore. It's now I have to get out. Like it's 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 enough it, just to be, get you into the door. It'd be nice though if his if his voice acting was just a yeah, bit better. Yeah, I was better. gonna say I don't believe him at all. I was only oh I really yeah, yeah. what's not going on? Oh, stop me! Stop trying to stop me! Like, oh no! I straight away would have like as soon as I saw that fucking kitchen yeah. would have ca- would have called <laughs> Sorry, somebody. You're dead. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't have left, but I would have been like, oh, no, this is this isn't just like oh, I'm in the area. This is like this place is fucked up. I gotta call the police. This is really yeah, fucked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean the kitchen? I would have called someone the minute I turned the corner and see the insignia of cow. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> he just walks through and he's just like, whoa, that's weird. And he's like in a dungeon and he sees a cage and he goes, Mia, is that you? You're like, what? Why aren't you freaking out? <laughs> Who yeah, the fuck think, is this voice actor? Just just before that, like um. <laughs> a body like floats up in the water like half his face gone and he's yeah, just like right. ah yeah his performance his performance isn't good <laughs> but shocking. as far as like um setting set like using that as the setup i think is oh, yeah. Is, yeah. is fine because yeah, it, no, quickly, setup, it's it fine. quickly turns to hell it's not like you're now going through a five hour game still looking for her because it eventually becomes right. you're actually just trying to get the hell out of there yeah. But in terms of setup for like believable love, for me it's as believable as Marion Peach. It's it's just that is, here's the girl, go love, find her. That's love right there. <laughs> that's love, man. That's when you're willing to eat mushrooms and grow big for someone, that's love. That is love. <laughs> right. Some people need the help to get big, alright? They can't do that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh jesus okay this episode is sponsored by <laughs> magic shrooms oh jesus christ <laughs> can't get big take some shrooms <laughs> stop <laughs> it's still fucking going 
<laughs> yeah, I no. Five hours later, still going. This is the thing. I think the the um, it's why I'm kind of interested in Resi Eight, and obviously we haven't played it yet, and we can't really comment on it. But <laughs> the motive of looking for your child for some reason, I think, is going to resonate stronger because if you're going into something horrible like that and you're thinking it's your baby and they have your baby mm -hmm. i just feel like there's something about being like uh i i've never been a parent so i don't know what it's like but i just i just feel like there's something so strong about like no fuck you you have my child yeah actually yeah. i know a game that that was the premise and they handled it really badly which is fallout 4 because that's the premise right. of the game yeah, is that yeah, your, yeah. your your son gets taken. Yeah. So your motivation is obviously to go get your son. But then you kind of keep getting all like sidetracked with all this other stuff that's just so not believable yeah. that you would bother help these people and go build this settlement and you know, go help the brother of steel or find the railway or whatever. Like it's just not believable you do any of that. Yeah, over those particular story shots. arcs like that particular objective of motivation tends to only work when it is a single objective it is yeah. a very linear experience but when you have an open world game you should only have like your objective needs to be as open as the world you're walking into basically yeah and i think, I think the first like... few fallouts it was always just like you need to go find a thing to come save us go find it so Sound. you just go out and you have to explore the world and, and figure out where that thing is yeah yeah because yeah, i think i think that's why then skyrim kind of works mention it again take a shot um <laughs> yeah because you have to try and figure out the defeat the bad guy uh, yeah you have to it, but then defeating the bad guy is as important as you the player make it right yeah yeah because the like, dragons just aren't decide. like yeah, right i don't not, care there's not loads of dragons straight away. It's just one. So you could maybe be like, well, I don't really want to fight the dragons. I want to go join the companions. That's an option. You don't have to do it straight away and so on and so forth. And you could do it hey, afterwards too. And you could do it afterwards. See, Fallout 4 doesn't even offer that. Fallout 4 actually takes away people if you keep continuing the story. And it's I think it's hard to do. And there's a difference between like, like you can have open area games or whatever, but I think it's very difficult to do a narrative driven game and a completely open world game at it's the very same hard. time. I think it's very but hard to do. There is a game, a game with a very strong female character and no romance in it at all, that did do an open world with a very good narrative. Horizon? Yeah. Yeah, but it, I see, I'm talking like... I think when people say open world, it's not necessarily just oh the world that you get to explore is a, 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 an open yeah. one that you can come back and forth to. I think it's that when you're dropped in, pretty much after uh, once you finish the tutorial, like you can more do what of you a like. sandbox game. You can do what you like. Yeah. Like so, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. As soon as you leave that first like town, you avoid of being beheaded and whatever. You can not do any quests to progress. Like, yeah. You can just do yeah. nothing. All right. With Horizon, you have to progress the story to open up the map. Kind of like like Horizon's very like. Or a game that's more like it would be Ghost of Tsushima. It's like, oh, it is an okay. open world game, but it's not like Skyrim. Yeah, okay. I guess you mean you that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I think, yeah. And I think that's what... For me, that's sort of the decision. Like, I think it's hard. Like, you have to sacrifice one for the other. If you want multi, if you want ultimate choice, which is probably why Fallout 4 doesn't work, if you want to give the player a total choice and total freedom, then you can't give them a really personal narrative at the same time. Mm. Because the two will go against each other. It's like, well... Okay, the story wants me to have a sense of urgency and to get on with it. But I want to go and rob a farm. Unless, of course, <laughs> your your personal objective mm. is to just survive. Yeah, right. Okay, so I mean, I something more general work. then yeah. would need to be the... It has to be a little specific. bit, yeah, like a very selfish objective as opposed to looking at someone I, else. I, I think that would be good for the, if they do what well, they will do. I think that would be a good objective for Fallout because now you're not playing. Now being good or bad is defined by your objective, yeah. not necessarily by you wanting to. Just I think a good objective, just... yeah, for Fallout would be you actually start in the wasteland and your objective is actually to try, try, try and get yeah somehow end up living in a vault. It's like that's the dream come true. I'd love to live in a vault. 
the rich fuckers That'd in there. Cool. And it's, it's you're working yeah. backwards. You know, yeah. and f- you're always yeah. starting a vault. Yeah, no, that would, I, I think that would be a pretty yeah. cool I mean, twist on Fallout, that. Fallout New Vegas is, I think, is the only one that, well, that I've played that doesn't start in a vault, and it was quite interesting. Mm, Do you know, actually, what's another good... um relationship that kind of worked for me which goes against what i was kind of saying earlier about the whole like the mia thing and any of those games where it's like you're looking for your wife and it's just established that that's your wife so you're supposed to love her or whatever and it's kind of weird because there is no acting from your side of it and that's dead space the first dead space i found myself that i i not that i i, I don't think it's like the greatest example of romance in a game no. anything like that. but i cared about her i wanted to find her i did want to save her mm. you know that's, what i mean that's a great game for me that, that worked yeah that, that, is that twist was so fucking good that's the thing as well they kind of built the core around the whole it's like looking for your wife is the key and your wife is going to interact with you and it's actually going to be playing to like the finale of the game and it's, yeah. for me that that whole thing worked it was all built around that relationship um, but yeah, you don't see it blossom. You don't see it grow. Not like look, we we can't, we jumped straight into it. That's the thing. In the very beginning, we were like, no, we got it. These are the ones. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Pretty we much have it. it. But maybe there's a game out there. There's definitely going to be a mobile app game. That's Someone's like, got something where yeah. you have to like text, you know, a message, and then the AI will text it back to you, and you have to like yeah. try and get into their pants by the end of the game or something. Maybe I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I that think is, it's called that's... Virtual Girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, in fact, I'll just check the app now. I, <laughs> but, yeah, she's still there. Hasn't divorced me. So, <laughs> but no, but I'd say there's console games out there as well that are like uh, that have huge love stories. Yeah, I mean, there's some really things. weird ones. If you keep scrolling through the PlayStation Store, you come across some very questionable looking games like okay. that. Like the cover art is like. Is this even legal? Like, should uh, especially in the VR section, there's some fucking weird shit. Like, I'm sure you're not just on the. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, what I was trying to say was that if there's one that's actually nice and good, uh, and uh, yeah, let us know. <laughs> jump into the comments <laughs> and stay away from that fucking weird VR section. Adam's out of it. But yeah, there's probably look. There's probably loads of games out there. I'd imagine there's loads more JRPGs. I think. I think that would be the. That's the probably. genre that's like. All of them like kingdom hearts probably has it probably um, has a strong love story in there but when yeah, we went probably. to explain kingdom hearts uh, or got explained to us by nathan he never mentioned a love story maybe it's not no. that important maybe. or maybe it's just that it's like oh if i start talking about that well <laughs> it's so, so it, gets, it gets even more confusing <laughs> yeah. um okay so that's where everyone else comes in if you know of a game uh that has a particularly strong love story to feel we we didn't mention you're like guys you, you've missed the big one or if there's a relationship or a couple out there in gaming that you feel particularly works, do let us know. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can jump down into the comments to let us know. You can also help us out by giving us a thumbs up, hitting subscribe, and clicking that notification bell so you know when we put out future episodes. If you're listening to us on audio platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever else you like to listen to us, you can just play social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take. Again, to let us know uh, where you feel that games have best explored the concept of romantic love and uh, and just that whole that concept in general. Do they need to explore it? Is it explored at all? Maybe you don't want to see it. I don't know. Let us know and we will be back to talk about more video games next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>